So, a quick training video for the WiMAC District Council because uh, we've sold them lots of gauges and we haven't really done any training. So, here we go with a short version. I'll still come on site and do some, um, but uh, here's a brief introduction. So, when you unpack the gauge, there'll be a protective film on the front of the lens and the batteries will not be installed. So, we will quickly uh, install those batteries. And this is why I shouldn't drink before work. Um, so the batteries go in, just two AAs. Good idea to use alkaline um, so that they don't leak, etc. We'll just check we've got life here, and we do. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cover back on. The battery should last ages and ages. Oh, I can't remember how many thousand hours, but it's a long time. So um, don't worry too much about that. Now, oh, and of course it comes with the dongle, which allows you to connect to your PC and download by radio. The gauge works on a menu system which is not the most helpful in the whole world. So I'm just gonna run through some of the menu settings on here for you. The book, you should read the book, but the book isn't terribly well done. Um, so I'm gonna run through them with you. Most of the buttons have dual functions. So if we look at this button that says units, which normally switches between bar, KPA, megapascals, Etc. Etc. I'll go back to something sensible like KPA. So we're all nice and SI units. Um, so the button that says units also has the cog symbol below, which we know from our cell phones is your settings. These two buttons also are your up and down selection uh, and the zero button is also the lock button. So for example, if you go to use the gauge and you long and, and the um, and the padlock symbol is there, you can't do anything because it's locked. So that's a good idea to protect it. Now, whenever you are logging, uh, the lock symbol will come up to protect it, which is a good idea. Let's unlock it for now. So uh, what I'll print out for you uh, and send through via Phil or Rodney uh, is a list of the menu structure. There is a instruction book and on the last page of that, it does show the various menu stages. Actually, I'll, I'll insert that into the video now. So hopefully if I've edited this video correctly, a menu um, screen would have appeared showing the um, makeup of the various functions on the menu. Okay, so let's talk about the menu. There's a couple of ways to operate the gauge. One that I prefer, especially if, if you're tradespeople and you're used to tools and not so used to computers, is to have the gauge automatically begin logging and automatically begin uh, sending out a signal, radio signal, as soon as you power it up. And that makes all sorts of sense to me. And here we have the radio signal showing that it is on straight away. The logging symbol is not up at the moment. Now, like a cell phone, most of these keys have two functions, depending on whether they're long press or short press. So if we look at the units button, down below it, we have that cellular type universal symbol for settings. So short press changes the units, KPA, megapascal, uh, percentage, etc. We'll go back to KPA, so we're in SI units. But if we long press it, we go into the settings menu. In a similar way, uh, this button turns on the light or long press does another function. And the zero button either locks the gauge, unlocks the gauge, or is the enter button when you're setting things on the menu. So let's go into the menu. We long press the units button and we're into the menu. 
The first menus item that comes up, and if you refer back to that uh, photo of the menu structure, is averaging. If you're doing something in front of a customer, if they see numbers flicking past madly, they might get confused and not know what's going on. Um, so averaging says that it will take 10 readings uh, and it will average the reading over that time. And that makes sense of the last digit's not flicking over, but you can turn that to whatever you want. So let's say, for example, if we select on that, remember that the zero key is also selecting. So at the moment it's set to 10, which is uh, the number of filters. It will filter over 10 samples, but I could then select nine right through to off, so there's no filtering at all. Um, and you can select which one works for you. And there you have a uh, low pass first order filter, which is probably a pretty reasonable one. Uh, it's not first order as in uh, the evil empire in Star Wars. But let's select on that, so we're gonna select that. And we're gonna go to the next function in the menu, which is your backlight time. See how the light is showing. Uh, so the backlight is set to cup to be on as long as you've turned it on. You could set that to turn off after 30 seconds, 60 seconds, etc. In a similar way, you can set the gauge to auto power off after a certain time. So we see the power symbol. Uh, we don't want that at the moment because we're going to leave it out there logging. Um, so I think we should leave that as it is. Currently, the sampling rate, which is indicated by this, um, shows 0.3. So it's going to be sampling every 0.3 of a second. So that might be too quick for you, but it is quite useful for capturing fast transients like water hammer. But again, let's say we want to change that. We would simply select it and use the up and down arrows to select what you want. 0.1 of a second, uh, 15 seconds, now, Rodney pointed out that he had a, a, a situation where he uh, let the pressure off and the gauge stayed on, showing pressure. So um, this might have been the case. If this was set to 15 seconds, that would be the case. So let's stick with 0.3 of a second for now. Time. Channel. Now, again, the gauge that Rodney bought in uh, we're set to channel 13 in error, I'm sure. So again, we're probably going to leave that alone. Now, here we're into the logging menu. Uh, logging right now is set to off. Let's turn that on. Firstly, we have the capacity. That will show you how much memory you've used. Ignore send, ignore delete for now. Gap is just a, a way of saying how often you want the logger to sample. So if we enter on that, at the moment it's it's sampling on the logging every one second. And again, that's probably reasonable. So we hit the escape to exit that menu. Uh, and then we go up to, now, here we have logging to be automatically starting or automatically stopping. I don't know what CT stands for. Uh, we can make up something, but anyway, CT1, means that at power up, logging will occur straight away. And similar on the radio, if its CT is set to one, it will start logging straight away. And that's probably a good idea. So let's turn logging on to make sure it's ready to go. And then we're out of that menu. So now we can see a couple of things on the screen. We can see the radio symbol flashing, which indicates that it is not communicating with the computer at this point because, well, I haven't plugged the dongle in, so it won't. But we see the logging symbol. Uh, anyone under 50 won't even realize what that is as a picture of a floppy disk to indicate logging. Um, now we see the padlock is up. Whenever you have the gauge set to start logging automatically, that is CT mode one, uh, the lock will come on to protect the gauge from being fiddled with by mistake. So I would recommend for most people, unless you're a real computer nerd, like say me, um, to have it automatically start logging and automatically start radio. If you do need to get out of the lock mode, you simply hit the, hold the lock button and the lock comes off. Okay. 
But as I say right now, we'll do it again. If we power off and power on, we'll see the firmware number and straight away uh, it will start logging. It will start looking for the radio signal and the padlock will be up. So that is my recommended mode of operation unless you want to get super techy.